Good morning. Today we celebrate the fourth Sunday of Lent. We are now uh, halfway through our Lenten journey. But added to this mix of our Lenten journey has been the coronavirus. In some ways, as we have been on our Lenten journey, maybe sacrificing, taking more time in prayer, the weird sort of thing is that coronavirus has given us probably more time to be by ourselves since we are called to socially distance ourselves and more time for prayer. In a weird sort of way, uh, we find ourselves at many times alone. And so it's good that we can gather as faith communities to celebrate. Today, this Mass is for Holy Redeemer, Our Lady of Perpetual Help, St. Michael, and added to uh, the group this week is Our Lady of the Lake University, or our chapel. So this Mass, uh, the intentions of this Mass is for all of you, all of you, uh, during this difficult time that we may continue to persevere, that we may continue to pray for one another, we may continue on our Lenten journey toward the resurrection. Please join me in prayer as we celebrate, as we worship our Lord, and we give thanks to God for the great gift of life. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Sisters and brothers, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous law. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, our Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O oh God, who through your word Reconcile the human race to yourself in a wonderful way. Grant, we pray, that with prompt devotion and eager faith, the Christian people may hasten toward the solemn celebrations to come. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Let us be seated as we listen to the word. Jesse sent and had the young man brought to them. 
he was ruddy, a youth handsome to behold, and making a splendid appearance. The Lord said, There, anoint him, for this is the one. Then Samuel, with the horn of oil in hand, anointed David in the presence of his brothers. And from that day on, the Spirit of the Lord rushed upon David. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The responsorial response is, the Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The, the Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. In burdened pastures he gives me repose. Beside restful waters he leads me. He refreshes my soul. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. He guides me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side with your rod and your staff that give me courage. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. You spread the table before me in the sight of my foes. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. The, the Lord, Lord is my shepherd. There, there is nothing I shall want. want. Only goodness and kindness follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord for years to come. The, the Lord, Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. Lectura de la Carta del Apóstol San Pablo a los Efesios. Hermanos, en otro tiempo ustedes fueron tinieblas, pero ahora, unidos al Señor, son luz. Vivan, por lo tanto, como hijos de la luz. Los frutos de la luz son la bondad, la santidad y la verdad. Busquen lo que es agradable al Señor y no tomen parte en las obras estériles de los que son tinieblas. Al contrario, recuérdenlas abiertamente, porque si bien las cosas de ellos que hacen en secreto, da rubor aún mencionarlas, al ser recobradas abiertamente, todo queda en claro, porque todo el que es iluminado por la luz, se convierte en luz. Por eso se dice, despierta, tú que duermes, levántate de entre los muertos, y Cristo será tu luz. Palabra de Dios. Te alabamos, Señor. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. The Lord be with you. Amen. A 
reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. As Jesus passed by, he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, neither he nor his parents sinned. It is so that the works of God might be made visible through him. We have to do the works of the one who sent me after we have to do the works of the one who sent me while it is day. Night is coming, but no one can work. While I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had said this, he spat on the ground and made clay with the saliva, and smeared the clay on his eyes and said to him, Go wash in the pool of Siloam, which means scent. So he went and washed and came back able to see. His neighbors and those who had seen him earlier as a beggar said, Isn't this the one who used to sit and beg? Some said it is, but others said, No, he just looks like him. He said, I am. So they said to him, How were your eyes open? He replied, The man called Jesus made clay and anointed my eyes and told me, Go to Siloam and wash. So I went there and washed and was able to see. And they said to him, Where is he? He said, I don't know. They brought the one who was once blind to the Pharisees, that Jesus had made clay and opened his eyes on a Sabbath. So then the Pharisees also asked him how he was able to see. He said to them, He put clay on my eyes, and I washed, and now I can see. So some of the Pharisees said, This man is not from God, because he does not keep the Sabbath. But others said, How can a sinful man do such, such signs? And there was a division among them. So they said to the blind man again, What do you have to say about him since he opened your eyes? He said he is a prophet. Now the Jews did not believe that he had been blind and gained his sight until they summoned the parents of the one who had gained his sight. They asked him, Is this your son who you say was born blind? How does he now see? His parents answered and said, We know that this is our son and that he was born blind. We do not know how he sees now, nor do we know who opened his eyes. Ask him. He is of age. He can speak for himself. His parents said this because they were afraid of the Jews, for the Jews had already agreed that if anyone acknowledged him as the Christ, he would be expelled from the synagogue. For this reason, his parents said, He is of age. Question him. So a second time, they called the man who had been blind and said to him, Give God the praise. We know that this man is a sinner. He replied, If he is a sinner, I do not know. One thing I do know is that I was blind and now I see. So they said to him, What did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? He answered them, I told you already, and you did not listen. Why do you want to hear it again? Do you want to become his disciples too? They ridiculed him and said, you are that man's disciple. We are disciples of Moses. We know that God spoke to Moses, but we do not know where this one is from. The man answered and said to them, This is what is so amazing, that you do not know where he is from, yet he opened my eyes. We know that God does not listen to sinners, but if one is devout and one does his will, he listens to him. It is unheard of that anyone ever opened the eyes of a person born blind. If this man were not from God, he would not be able to do anything. They answered and said to him, You were born totally in sin, and you are trying to teach us? Then they threw him out. When Jesus heard that they had thrown him out, he found him and said, Do you believe in the Son of Man? He answered and said, Who is he, sir, that I may believe in him? Jesus said to him, You have seen him, the one Speaking with you is he. He said, I do believe, Lord, and he worshipped him. Then Jesus said, I came into this world for judgment, so that those who do not see might see, and those who do see might become blind. Some of the Pharisees who were with him heard this and said to him, Surely we are not blind, are we? 
Jesus said to them, If you were blind, you would have no sin. But now you are saying, We see, so your sin remains. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise the Lord. These weeks of Lent, uh, when we have the scrutinies, although we aren't having the scrutinies, we have, and of course, it's cycle A readings, and so we have these great readings of the woman at the well. Today we have the man born blind. And I was thinking a lot about that, about not being able to see the confusion, the chaos, the darkness. And I thought about what we're going through right now. I wish we had a, some sort of way to see what's going to happen and where it's going to lead and what's going to go on. Just as the blind man probably had a great deal of fear and uncertainty in his life, we experience that same fear and uncertainty in our lives. And yet the man born blind came into this encounter with Jesus Christ. Note that Jesus spoke first. Jesus acted first to bring about a restoration and a wholeness in the blind man's life. He came to see Christ and to know Christ. And so in many ways, he's the only one other than Jesus in the gospel who can see. The Pharisees remain blind. They cannot see their own sin. They cannot see their own close-mindedness to the works of Jesus. Let us continue to be open in our lives to the power and the presence of Jesus Christ who wants to give us sight, who wants to help us to see. But as we come to see and as we come to know Christ and as we come to encounter Christ on our Lenten journey, let us also be the ones who put that lead paste on the eyes of others, helping them to see the presence of Christ. I think we, as communities, have that potential to help others to see Christ by our actions, the actions of generosity and kindness and love and mercy and forgiveness, especially in this time now of darkness, in this time of chaos, that we can be that light for others by calling someone up, by reaching out to someone who is alone, by not distancing ourselves completely socially from others, but reaching out and helping them to understand that yes, we will get through this. Yes, the Lord is still with us, and yes, that the Lord loves us. Let us continue to seek the light of Christ let us continue to be the light of Christ so that all may come to know, that all may come to see the Christ who is in our midst. Let us make our profession of faith. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible, I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, Lord of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men, for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate with the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have him away. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen.
Let us bring our prayers to the Lord and entrust ourselves to Him. For our world and communities that all may embrace the fragility of life and our common humanity as brothers and sisters, one family under God, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For health care professionals who care for the sick, that the Lord protect them from the illnesses they are treating and make them instruments of His healing. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For those who are suffering from the coronavirus, that they will be brought near to the heart of Jesus and receive healing in body and soul from the divine physician. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For the sick of our parish communities and our families, especially the sick, shut in, and homebound, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For all those who have died and those who mourn their loss, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For the prayers we hold in our hearts, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. Let us continue to, continue to pray for our communities. Holy Redeemer, Our Lady of Perpetual Health, St. Michael's, and Our Lady of the Lake University, that during this time that we are dispersed, that we may continue to hold one another in our hearts, that we may continue to pray for one another and lift one another up in our prayers each day, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. Loving Father, through this time, may your church be a sign of hope and comfort and love to all. Grant comfort, grant healing, grant peace. Be with us, we pray, and we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Bless you, Bless them in you, Lord God of all creation, and through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and the work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Bless be Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands, and the praise of the Lord in His name, for our good and good of all this holy church. We place before you with joy these offerings, which bring eternal remedy, O Lord, praying that we may both faithfully revere them and present them to you as a city for the salvation of all the world. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. By the mystery of the Incarnation, He has led the human race, He has led the human race that walked in darkness into the radiance of the faith and has brought those born in slavery to ancient sin through the waters of regeneration to make them your adopted children. Therefore, all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration, and we with all the host of angels cry out, and without end acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. 
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. A sequest of al sabra a ora in memoria de la muerte y resurrección de tu hijo. Te ofrecemos el pan de vida y el cáliz de salvación. Y te damos gracias porque nos haces dignos de servir en tu presencia. De venir suelamente que el Espíritu Santo congregue a morir a cuantos participamos del cuerpo y la sangre de Cristo. Acuérdate, Señor, de tu iglesia extendida por toda la tierra, y con el Papa Francisco, con nuestro obispo Gustavo, y todos los pastores que cuidan de tu pueblo, llevada a su perfección por la caridad. Acuérdate también de nuestros hermanos que se liberarán de la esperanza de la resurrección, y de todos los que han vuelto de misericordia, mientras a contemplar la luz de tu rostro. Ten misericordia de todos nosotros, y así con María, la Virgen Madre de Dios, su esposo San José, los apóstoles y cuantos vivirán en tu amistad a través de los tiempos. Verascamos con tu Dios el Cristo, compartir la vida eterna y cantar tu alabanza. Por Cristo, con él y en él a ti, Dios Padre omnipotente, en la unidad del Espíritu Santo, tu honor, tu gloria, por los siglos de los siglos. Amén. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope of the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. La paz del Señor esté siempre con ustedes. Dense futuramente la paz. Cordero de Dios, que quitas el pecado del mundo, ten piedad de nosotros. Cordero de Dios, que quitas el pecado del mundo, ten piedad de nosotros. Cordero de Dios, que quitas el pecado del mundo, danos la paz. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Loving God, we ask you to be with all of our brothers and sisters who are joining us in this communion spiritually from their homes. May they know the peace, and the joy, and the fullness that you give, that you feed them with this gift of yourself, that they might have life, that we might be one with one another in our life together. Continue to pour your blessings upon us, Lord. We thank you for the gift of this Eucharist. We thank you for the gift of your life. We thank you for the love that you bestow upon us. We thank you for the forgiveness and mercy and the life that you give us through the gift of your Son. Let us pray. O God, who enlighten everyone who comes into this world, illumine our hearts, we pray, with the splendor of your grace, that we may always ponder what is worthy and pleasing to your majesty and love you in all sincerity, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated to my congregation that is with me again. We have a small congregation. Uh, you know, we can only have up to 10 people. So I try to invite someone from each parish to represent our parishes, and today, Our Lady of the Lake University. So I thank Richard from Our Lady of Perpetual Health, Carol from Holy Redeemer, Margie from St. Michael's, and Gloria Orbaso, Vice President for Mission and Ministry at Our Lady of the Lake University. Uh, we continue with not being able to uh, celebrate the Sunday liturgies publicly, and we'll continue to do this until the foreseeable future. We will continue to uh, televise the Mass. Uh, we will do it at 9 o'clock on Sunday mornings. Uh, seems to be a reasonable amount of time. I guess this is one time I guess you could probably go to church while you're in bed. You know, so many Sundays I think a lot of my parishioners are in bed, so I guess you really could be in bed and be able to uh, take part in the Mass. Um, just a reminder for religious education, for the three parishes, the coordinators have been working on how to get the information out to the youth and to move that forward. Carol and uh, Friar Fabian are working with someone in IT to get out the RCIA. So we uh, continue to uh, monitor the offices, although I really don't ask the volunteers to come in. I'd rather they stay home to protect themselves. I want to thank those of you who have been sending in your Sunday contributions. I know that's kind of touchy because I know that there might be some of you who are out of work because of the coronavirus, and I want to be very sensitive about that. But at the same time, uh, we still have to pay the, the bills here. And so if you can, uh, it would be great if you could mail your contribution or drop your contribution off uh, at the parish office in this mail slot. Um, but we are grateful for whatever you do and however you can help us. We certainly have to take a look at that. And we've been asked by the Archdiocese, all the parishes, to look at their finances and to see what is necessary and what is unnecessary. And so we do have to take a serious look at that. Um, for the university, I would encourage you to go to Facebook and Our Lady of the Lake University, University Ministry. Uh, they're posting things regularly, as well as the Mass on Tuesday and on Thursday is being live streamed 
at 12.30. I would encourage you to look at that also. Go to Snapchat. I know they're doing some interviews on Snapchat. A way for us to stay connected with one another and to be kind of uplifted and to give some spiritual motivation. To those of you in the parishes, continue to uh, use your word among us and pray daily. I think that's important. That's a way that we can keep in spiritual solidarity. One of the things that's really on my mind is how does the church exist post coronavirus now that we have these Sundays where we don't go to Mass? What happens after that? And so uh, we need to continue to pray for the church and to pray for one another. Uh, how do we maintain that sense of community when we are so separated? I think it's important for us to, to talk to one another, to text one another, uh, to do things differently. If there's anything for sure, coronavirus is going to change how we do things in the United States, in the church, and in society. Um, I think that's already being seen. But at any rate, if you have an emergency, if you need a priest, please don't hesitate to call. Uh, if you need to go to the Sacrament of Reconciliation, please call and I will set up an individual appointment with you to do that. If someone in an emergency needs to be anointed, please don't hesitate to call. Uh, it's different for me, certainly I'm here uh, and willing to help out in whatever way I can. You have to know, or I hope you know, that I am praying for all of you in my three parishes and in the university community that we may continue to be healthy, that we may continue to uh, search for the light, which is Jesus Christ. That is our hope, that is our life, and I think as we come to this fourth Sunday of Lent, and I'm wearing this rose-colored vestment, that in some ways symbolizes hope. We're moving toward the resurrection, and also as we move through this with the coronavirus, that we continue to be people of hope, people of faith, people of love. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, glorifying the Lord by your lives. Thanks be to you. I will see you next Sunday uh, at 9 o'clock a.m. Also, I forgot to tell you, at the end of our video, we're going to hopefully attach another video with a song that I think is uplifting and powerful and hopefully brings you some joy on this Sunday.